This last code that we wrote was about populating the fields and then uh, displaying a pop-up. Uh, last time we created a this pop-up and we thought about adding a delete and edit button. Let's deal with delete first. That one's a little easier. So again, obviously, when we, when we work with apps and software and games and websites that someone else created, it's so easy, so obvious. We click a button, something happens. Well, for us, we've got a big old button called delete and nothing happens because we didn't program it to do anything. So what happens behind the scenes is we want to click delete and we want it to know that the comic we want to delete is this one I'm currently looking at. The same way that it knows to show me the data of this comic that I clicked on, well, this comic that I clicked on, this row, remember, has, a, has its ID associated with that row. We're able to access the ID of this row by clicking the little bubble. Stuff happen, happens behind the scenes. It keeps track of that ID. And it shows me this comic in the pop-up. Therefore, if we know the ID, we know which comic to delete when we press delete. We have the command of db.remove uh, to remove one item from the database based on the ID. So we're going to need to set up several things. We're, need, we're going to need to set up that when we click that button, JavaScript runs to delete a comic. The comic in question is this one that I clicked on. So back to our code, we're going to need to set up a few things here. First, we'll go back to where we've got all of our variables, and we're going to create a variable to keep track of the comic to delete. So let's go back to where we've got our variables. We've got a, a block starting at line 30 where we've got all of these variables we're creating to do various things. And we started to create some variables that were pouch specific. There's the variable for our database. There's the variable to display the comics. OK, well, we need another variable here. This is going to store um, the, the comic in question to delete. Variable to keep track of which comic to delete. <coughs> or work with dot dot dot. So we knew which comic to work with when we clicked on the speech bubble. It looked at the data ID of that row. But that information only existed as long as that function was running. So we'll create then a global variable that will keep track of that information globally so we can reference that comic in different parts of our code. And we will set this to be called TMP comic to delete. We will not assign it anything. Just like this variable of the database is not set to anything, we're saying let's create a variable that will exist to use everywhere in our app, but we don't know what to set it yet until we know who's logged in. This is another variable that we're not setting to anything because we don't know which comic to delete when the app first runs. This will change when you click the speech bubble and then it'll set itself to, oh, we mean this comic, this comic that I clicked on, that I want to view its info, this is the comic I may want to delete. So that's what this variable will keep track of. This will be set to the correct value, like I said, at the moment that we click on the comic on its speech bubble. Before we leave the variables here, we'll create another variable to set ourselves up for that button to be active and clickable. So uh, object representing the delete comic button. Creating a new variable. This is going to be based on the button that's in the HTML file, which we were very clever and called it btn delete comic. 
So dollar l btn delete comic is equal to jQuery selector to search for and find a thing with an ID, a node with an ID of btn delete comic. So now we've got a JavaScript representation of the button in the HTML file. I guess lastly also while we're here we'll create the one for the edit comic right because we've got a button to delete the comic we've got a, got a button to edit the comic I, I guess while we're here to not forget we'll also create a, an object for editing the comic object representing the edit comic button exactly the same as before but this time the name of the edit button ID We'll use that edit button a little later, but what we need for the moment is this one that represents the, com the temporary comic in question to delete, and then the object representing the button to start the process of deleting this comic. Let's assign a value to this temp comic. That happens at the moment that we display the comic in question. If we go back to our function to show comics info, line 480, this is the function that runs after we click on a speech bubble and we're saying okay the um, Temporarily in the memory, as long as this function runs, let's save the ID of the comic in question. Well, we know the ID of the comic in question, so now we can assign the global one. Also, pass to the global variable, global scope variable, the comic in question. The global scope one is uh, temp comic to delete equal to temp comic. Temp comic only exists in memory as long as that function is running. Temp comic to delete is global, it exists at all times until it changes. But uh, here then we're passing back the value of the comic in question to the global scope so we can use it in a different function. So this variable is only assigned when a person clicks the view info icon. That should make sense. I don't know which comic I'm going to delete until I click the view info icon. So then it gets set. Next, we'll need to start to uh, run a function to delete the comic. Well, that function won't happen until someone clicks the button, delete a comic. So let's create an event listener to listen for the event that someone wanted to delete the comic. Let's go to where our event listeners are. Line 543 or so inside of the on-device ready. Uh, event listener 
waiting for a click on the delete comic button. Now we've done this several times, but I forgot. So what do I do here? Help me out. How do I start off my code here? L button delete comic. Yep, that's the button in question we're trying to work with. What's next? Dot on. Yes, why don't I use dot on submit? It's not a form. Good, so on the event of something, what's the something that we're waiting for? Click. Okay, finished. The name of the function. So, comma, what should we call our function? Trick question. Delete comic. Well, that's what we're trying to do. Here's our function that will delete a comic. So, when we press a button, we'll run a function delete comic. Now, why doesn't it look like this or the one up there with that function part? That one perhaps is a little more esoteric, the answer. I needed to pass in a parameter. I needed to pass in the row. So that's why we needed this whole function thing. Up there, we needed to capture the event of the default submittal of the form. Here, we don't have to do anything special at all. Just run the function, and then we're going to delete the comic. Which comic? Well, that's being stored in the variable. So we don't have to pass anything into this function. We just call the function like that with no parentheses. If we needed parentheses, we needed to use the function syntax. So default here is no parentheses. Just run that function. Like up here, btn uh, logout. Just run the function to log out. We don't need to pass in any, any variables, any, any data into it. Just do the function. So it's the simple syntax, no parentheses necessary. OK, well, if we're calling a function here which doesn't exist, we need to then start to uh, write that function, define that function. So we'll back up to where we're writing our functions. Back up a few lines after the end of function show comic. Function to delete a comic. Comic in question comes from temp comic to delete. So the name of the function curly braces. Note the end of our function for readability. We don't need to put anything in the, in the parameters here. <clears throat> Nothing is actually being passed into it. It's globally, it always knows which comic we are deleting as long as we've clicked <coughs> the info button. And the only time we're going to see the delete button is to first click the info button. So logically, it will always know which comic to delete once we've clicked on the info button. And as we usually do, some console output here so that we confirm that this function is running. I think we forgot to do this for one function somewhere, but uh, you can do that. It's running. And then also, just to, be, just to be sure here, as we beta test this, well, actually alpha testing this, we want to make sure we're about to delete the comic we think we're about to delete. Comic about to delete is, and the name of the variable that stores the comic we're about to delete. Temp comic to delete. Save it and run it. Try to um, 
try to see um, once you get the pop-up for the particular comic check your console to confirm that it says it's running and check your console to confirm that it's about to delete the comic in question which is based on its ID
so the code so far is uh, just confirming that we're about to delete a certain comic. Continuing, in order for us to delete a comic, we, we have db.remove, but we don't want to jump directly into removing. It's a good idea to confirm that what we're about to remove exists, and then once we've confirmed it exists, then delete it. So we're actually first going to try to retrieve the comic in question. If it exists, great, let's delete it. But wait a minute, these commands happen right away, instantly, don't they? If we just put db remove, it's gone. We need to build in, are you sure you want to delete? That sort of thing. So we have a few things to do. Confirm that the comic in question exists before we delete it. And then confirm to the user, do they really want to delete it? Because they're going to lose a lot of info if they delete, and we haven't built in an undo to this. So we'll say first, check if the comic in question exists. So we have to do db.get. We use db.get to retrieve a comic from the database to display on screen. We also use the .get here just to confirm that it exists. If it doesn't exist, we'll have to deal with that error. If it does exist, okay, then we can proceed with, are you sure you want to delete? Once that's been confirmed, then actually delete it. So the comic in question to delete is temp comic to delete. Let's get, let's try to get this comic from the database, comma. Well, that'll be as usual. There will be an anonymous function callback here with a failure or success. I'll break apart those curly braces there. And dot get for checking if the comic in question exists. So we always uh, then have to check in the attempt to try to get and get failure or success. So again, this is going to be an if-else statement. If we got a failure, deal with it, or else we didn't get a failure, proceed. As we've done over and over so far, we will do a few more times. Let's check for failure first. Console log error comic does not exist. This is another case where we shouldn't ever really trigger this failure. Uh, but I said that about the other thing, and a couple people triggered it, that, so I'm not sure. We'll figure it out. So, uh, error comic does not exist. Well, which comic? We'll just put out here our failure object to try to make sense of it. So then, else we got a result that, yeah, the comic exists. So first check if it exists. Next, if it does exist, if it does exist, well, we'll say next. What am I doing? This is a comment. Uh, next, um, confirm with the user they really want to delete console. About to delete. And then we'll mark here. This will be a little redundant because we've already said something akin to that up here. The, as soon as the function runs, it's going to say it's about to delete this comment. We're saying basically the same thing here. But this is just to confirm. Nothing weird happened in between. 
this should match up here with that up there. And let's word it a little bit different. User wants to delete that comic. Okay, conditional statement. On the condition that they've chosen yes, let's delete it, then we'll delete it. On the condition that they've said never mind, then we won't delete it. Conditional statement to confirm their desire to delete. We'll work, we'll, we'll, we'll work with a switch statement. Switch. We'll work with a switch statement. So on the switch, this is where we will ask the question, are you sure? We have then cases of true or false, or other possible cases, like the default case. First possible case, colon, some code, break. There's a case of another possibility, colon, code, break. And then a default case in case those other cases weren't cased. Something here, and break that. This was like our log our logout button in the logout screen. We were about to log out, but first it asked, "Are you <coughs> sure?" And then we said yes or no, and that was via a plain old JavaScript confirm method. We'll ask a question here. About to delete this comic. Dot space backslash n. Are you sure? This backslash n creates a new line. It'll have in the first line, about to delete this comic. New line, next line, are you sure? And it'll automatically have an OK or a cancel. A person clicking OK kicks back a true. A person kicking cancel, uh, clicking cancel will kick back a false. So therefore, we've got a case for true and a case for false. There may be a third case, which is default. Let's say first we'll deal with the default case. Didn't pick OK or cancel. And the default case ends. In the case of false, um, user clicked cancel do nothing we don't need to do anything programmatically we don't need to alter the database we don't need to do anything they click cancel this the box closes itself nothing really happens 
you could have it do other things here like um, have it vibrate or play a sound or something <clears throat> nothing's really happening the box closes itself the heavy lifting happens under true If a person clicked OK, yes, I do want to delete, well, what actually happens is db.remove. Remove will delete one item from the database. Pouch db.remove. Pouch db's remove method command removes one item based on ID, underscore ID. ID at the moment is being stored in two places temp comic to delete and success the failure object that we get from trying to get the comic and it doesn't exist that'll be a, like a error 404 or 409 whatever but if we did try to get the comic in question we get back a success object which includes the ID and other metadata so then to remove, I'm going to say remove success. Based on ID, which is in the success object and other metadata. Other data that represents that particular comic, like revision number, which version of the data are we deleting? Technically, Pouch is storing different versions of the data if you make changes. So this would delete the current object, its current data, and mark it internally in the database as being deleted. So it would make sense to put temp comic to delete, but it, it's much more correct according to the PouchDB uh, documentation that we, we try to remove an object we try, we try to remove an entry or a document based on the success object. But here, as usual, we get a function callback, which then, trying to remove, will be a failure or success. That there, as usual, we try to do something, we try to remove, and what could happen is a failure or success. Okay, well, um, if else success, we just did that a, a moment ago up here with if failure else success. We've got another one in a deeper level. Sometimes when we write this code, it feels like inception because we're going we're going to go deeper. So okay, well, we're going to break about those curly braces and of dot remove. which then requires the if else to process failure or success and as usual we check is there a failure put it in the console fail to delete comic Output that. We're trying to remove the comic, we get either failure or success. We dealt with failure. To deal with success, a few things have to happen here. 
Well, first we'll have our console output that said um, successfully uh, deleted comic success.ok. So when we when we execute these commands, there's no automatic result for the user. Stuff happens behind the scenes, but not to the user. The user sees a table of comics, and I clicked show me the info of the comic, so a new pop-up. We click delete, they confirm it, etc. Then it's stuck right there. Okay, internally we delete the comic, but that pop-up is still visible. And even if we close the pop-up, the table is still the same, showing the comic that we just deleted. So we have to close the pop-up because that comic has been deleted. It doesn't close itself. Then we have to redraw the table without that comic we just deleted. So in the else here, Internally, in the console, we've said, OK, it's deleted. But we need to close the pop-up of the deleted comic, and we need to redraw the table. Next, close the currently open pop-up. The pop-up is currently visible at the moment. Uh, pound pop view comic. Yeah, right here. Pop view comics info. This is the comic currently on screen. Because up higher in our code, in our first show comics function, we said make pop view comics pop up like a dialog so that's currently the thing on screen so okay the thing currently on screen has a dialog method of close next close the currently open pop up don't forget the pound sign here because it's a screen with a unique ID, pound sign. It's, it popped up as a dialog box. That's what we have here. The role of this thing is a dialog. And therefore, we have a command. We have a method that says, OK, this is a dialog box. Close it. Lastly, refresh the table showing the comics. How do we do that? What's that? Thinking too hard. What's that? Mm, not quite. Someone else said something else. We have a function in charge of displaying the table. Function something. Got lots of functions to choose from. Which one do you think? Prep. Good. Prep is the one that prepares. It checks the number of comics in the database, passes that over to the table creator, and then the table is displayed. So it would make sense show comics table but comics table is based on prep so function show comics prep don't forget the parentheses that basically is execute the function without parentheses it doesn't actually execute the function it says okay you're ca you're naming a function but we're not executing it we're not using it so function show comics prep 
That's the function that prepares itself. Get the data from the database, excluding the last deleted comic, pass that info to show comics table, and then the table is redrawn with one less comic. That uh, should be it. Save it and run it. Try to delete a comic. See if you get a pop-up to confirm. Test it by canceling the pop-up first. Keeping an eye on the console that you get what you expect. Try to delete the comic and this time confirm it. And if it worked, you should get that console output. But better yet, the dialog box should close itself and the table should prepare itself to refresh itself without the without the comic in question that was deleted let me run it on mine to confirm let's see view comic let's say i'm going to delete thor let's see console I'm going to clean my console, uh, clear my console. So Thor pops up. There it is there. I'm going to click Delete, pop up. I'm about to delete this comic. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. uh, never mind, so I'll cancel. My output says, user, click Cancel. Do nothing. I'm going to try it again, Delete. This time I'll click OK. Console uh, says, uh, user wants to delete this one. Successfully deleted it. True. Function to show, co show comics prep is running, now with one less object. Screen refreshed, pop-up closed itself. When I delete, let's, let me add a brand new comic. So let's say my cat walked across the keyboard and somehow also added an issue number in here and somehow further walked on the keyboard and click save. So I've got a brand new comic saved and I look at my comics here. Oops, I don't want that comic, which I just saved right now. Pop-up box, delete, confirm, pop-up closes, screen or table refreshes. If you look in the application, if you're curious, and you look at your application viewer, index db viewer by sequence, comics that have been deleted still exist in the database, but now they have a new field called deleted. So this is a possible way to start to set up an undo, because the data is still there. It's just marked as deleted, just like in a regular computer that if I, if I have a file on my desktop and I click delete, it might first go to my recycle bin or trash. I can bring it back out of that. If I were to empty my recycle bin, then it's really gone. With more coding, which uh, I'm not going to get to yet, with more coding, we could have a way to undelete what has been deleted. But it shows that these items had existed. And technically, a second revision of the data. All of the other data that still exists has had one revision, because I, I haven't made more edits. But if you notice, I added that gibberish comic, and then I deleted it. And there's a deleted entry, which is associated with the undeleted entry. I added Thor a little while ago, entry number four. I deleted it as, as the sixth entry, so there's a deleted, which is associated with the undeleted one. It's still there, but now there's the deleted and undeleted. And with more coding, I could set up an un, undo and undelete. But we won't do that just yet. So that function preps comic is very important. Uh, that's the one that refreshes the table. 
sometimes as we work through the code and what was named something a certain way one time in a particular instance, perhaps then doesn't make it as much sense later. Uh, so if we have the whole project planned out and as we go through it, we can name these things in the perfect way, because maybe like that, mo most of us, which is fine, most of us forgot, oh, that's the function to actually show the table, not the one called function show table, because it has to first prepare. So this can be named other things, maybe to make it more obvious. Let's do one more thing, then we'll uh, then we'll then we'll check if the code works. Um, this is deleting individual comics. I don't want to sit there and click seven times to delete seven comics. I want to have a way to delete all of the database, all of the comics at once. So we have we have a way to do that. We can delete individual comics with dot remove. And we have the cataclysmically named db.destroy to delete the whole database. So to set ourselves up, We've got in the HTML file to delete one comic at a time, or edit one comic at a time. We want a way to delete the whole database. So I think we don't want to have that obvious or have people accidentally delete the whole database of comics. So we could put a button in here to delete all comics. We'll have, of course, a confirmation, are you sure? But I want to put that over on our options screen. People aren't going to hang out in the options very often. They have to go out of their way to create a delete all, to press a delete all comics database. So over in our options pop-up, we're going to add a new button there to delete all comics. Let's go to our HTML, our options screen, PG options. So in the HTML file, let's find a PG options. line 130. We've got our logout button. Line 138. We've got our logout button. We need to make a button to delete Delete the uh, delete the comics, but first uh, we'll create two horizontal lines there to separate log out and delete. And we'll do something very similar to the line above, where we need an href, data role, etc. Um, copy and paste because we're not going to need to have it go anywhere so it's got the dummy link a link going nowhere I want it to behave like a button uh, we'll use a different kind of icon in a moment uh, I think we have a delete icon a little X it needs a unique ID BTN delete collection. And the text that will appear on screen to the user is delete collection. We could say delete database, 
that's too technical, isn't it? Most people don't think of these things as a database. It's my collection, or my comics, or my inventory. So something for the user. Delete inventory, delete collection, delete comics. Whatever we want to say to the user. Unique ID, BTN, delete collection. Okay, well, like most of these buttons that exist in the HTML file, we need to create representations of them in the JavaScript file. So then we can have event listeners to listen for the event of a click of that button. So we'll do something that we've done several times here. We'll go back to the JavaScript file. We'll go to our, our area where we've created all these variables. VAR dollar L BTN delete collection equal to that button we just created. Button to delete the whole database. Okay, you should see where this is going. If we've got a JavaScript object representing the HTML node, then we need a, uh, an event listener to listen for clicking that button to run a function. We'll go down to the bottom where all of my event listeners are at. Event listener. for deleting database LBTN delete collection this is another one where it doesn't have to be very fancy in terms of it's going to be an on event and an on um, listener waiting for a click running a function to delete everything. FN delete collection. Okay, that's the named function we want to run after clicking that button. So we have to define that function. Back up to our function area. Function that deletes the database and reinitializes it. If we deleted the database, then we need to reset the database, start it over so that it can be so that new data can be saved to it. This is another example where logically for the user something happens, everything's deleted. But for us, the programmer, we have to deal with every aspect of that. We have to delete the database, but if we never reinitialize the database, there's no place for the new data to be saved to. So we need to sort of then restart the database, reinitialize it. As 
As usual, here we'll have our console that says this function is running. Ultimately, db destroy is the command that will do it. However, again, that's uh, that's that's it. The end. It's gone. So we don't want it to be to happen right away. We don't even have to, you know, give it any options or anything. db dot destroy is is it. it. It'll do it. The the function, I mean, the method destroy will destroy the database. This is the database we've been working with all along. Well, there's no, there's no confirmation or checking. We need to build it. We need to program it in. So we'll do the same thing that we did with deleting a comic. When we were deleting a comic, we asked, are you sure you want to delete? The same thing. We'll create a switch. But because this one's even more important, we'll ask twice the first time. You're about to delete a comic, are you sure? Yes or no? If they then click yes, we will say, are you sure? This cannot be undone. And then if they click a second OK, then actually delete it. So uh, two redundancies there. So we'll do the switch. And switch for first confirmation to delete database. Now we're going to have two, two levels of confirmation because uh, what sometimes happens with people is pop-ups happen, you don't really read them, you click OK. Well, we definitely don't want that for their collection. That's why we're going to have two pop-ups, because even if one came and went and they're like, what did I just click on? Well, you're going to have a second one. Hopefully they read that one, because then there's no going back. There's going to be another confirm. You are about to delete your whole collection. Backslash new line, confirm. The switch works with cases. Confirm is a true or a false. Case of true, something, case of false, oops, colon right there, not semicolon, colon, something else, semicolon, break, and a default case. We'll just have some console output didn't confirm or deny. False. They change their mind.
they wish to delete. Confirm one more time. We can do another switch here, or we can combine a switch and an if else. Question? Can we request the user to save the database before the video? Like save it somewhere else, like on a flash drive or something? Yes. We could. Um, we could transfer that data elsewhere. That kind of requires a lot of infrastructure to transfer it out of the app, but that's something that could be done, sure. PouchDB is set up internally in that it could copy itself to a server. So if we've got a server set up, we could first have it communicate and copy itself to the server, and then delete it and do stuff with that. So that, that's something that it could do. I'm not planning for it just yet, but it's something that it could do. So this is and of if else. Yes. Yes. Yes, let me just close it right here. Mm -hmm. End of if else, uh, second confirmation. Okay, um, similar to how we had this switch, we had the confirm method, which will either come back as true or false. So we can check true or false. With if, I believe we've done it at least one time before, that we can uh, check for true or false here too with a confirm. So a second confirm, which will also return a true or false. We'll say, are you sure? Cannot be undone. So one more pop-up will happen. There will be an OK or a cancel. If they click OK, true comes back. So inside of this first if block is the true. They do want to delete. The, the else part, OK, they got the second pop-up. This time they clicked Cancel, so we get to else. Second confirmation, canceled. the first switch which is the first question they clicked OK they get to the second level here second time they get asked they confirm one more time in the if part so then OK they said it OK twice so we have to do it you could build in one more level of are you really 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 sure you can add one more switch one more if else whatever but two is enough so finally 
use db use the the dot destroy pouch db method to destroy to delete the database remember I said a while ago as we're testing our project and you look inside of the developers console of Chrome there is a button that says delete database and I said I don't recommend you click delete database in Chrome because it breaks the connection between the app and the and the internals this is the correct way to do it here with a db.destroy because then the app will know the database has been deleted if you deleted it from Chrome it doesn't know it got deleted it tries to load it weird stuff happens so finally the command is db.destroy <clears throat> The database in question dot destroy. This one has no options that we need to pass into it, but it has a callback function of failure or success. Okay, uh, here again, uh, we are attempting to destroy. We get then a, either a failure or a success, so we have to deal with if a failure or else a success. I'm going to break apart the, break apart the curly braces. Here we say end dot destroy. We set up an if else. We, as we've done several times, we check for failure, and then we deal with success. Okay, well, um, if failure happened, we want to put some console output to try to troubleshoot that if it, if it didn't work. And so we'll say error trying to delete pouch DB. And then output that failure object to try to troubleshoot it. Uh, there shouldn't be any, it, it should delete it to the user. If for some reason it doesn't, here's an example where we can put a pop-up to the user and say something like error. It's trying to delete, but it didn't for some reason, so we'll make a pop-up for the user. We'll say I will have it say error, new line, contact the developer. And then we'll put um, our email there. If it did successfully delete, we want to do several things here. After deleting, let the user know. Reinitialize. the database, we draw the table. Even though internally we deleted the database, if a person were to go to wander off to view comics, all comics would still be there because we never refreshed the screen for the user. Cool. 
So we'll first say pouch db deleted. Success OK. So we're in the else block. It got deleted. Let the user know. We'll do a pop up here. We'll say your mom successfully threw out your comics. We have our function to initialize. database we have that function that when a person creates an account initialize a database based on that person's email account well db.destroy destroys it all let's reinitialize ourselves with a brand new empty database based on the person currently logged in and that function concerns itself with all of that so we just use it Database is back clean. And we need to redraw the table. Function show comics prep is our function that prepares to redraw the table, which then calls the function that redraws the table with all the comics empty. That's not how you spell through. There we go. So a lot of uh, error checking and confirming and checking if it's working and then output and ultimately everything's gone. The aftermath of it then being removed is we need to refresh the screen, tell the user, reinitialize the database. When you're using someone else's app, all of that just happens. But it had to be programmed for all of that stuff to happen behind the scenes and in the front end for the user. So let me just confirm mine works, and then we'll confirm yours works. Let me run it in the browser. So I know I've got all of these items in the database. I can see it in the application viewer. I see all of these items in the view comics screen. I'm going to go over to the options screen. I've got that scary delete collection. I'll click on that. Hit the pop you're about to delete. Cancel. Up here it was telling me that uh, the function was running when I first clicked it. I changed my mind. I'm going to delete try again. This time I will click the OK. That's it's getting covered by the pop-up here, but it says something. Okay, user's about to delete it. Confirm it one more time. So I get the pop-up. Are you sure? It cannot be undone? Okay, well, actually, yeah, maybe I don't want to delete it. So do that. Second confirmation canceled. Okay, I'm going to go for it this time. I'm going to delete it. I'm going to confirm one time. I'm going to confirm the last time. They do want to delete. Couch to be deleted. True. Forgot the space there. And it pops up. Your mom successfully threw out your comics. When I close that, well, um, it finishes up the last bit there. It reinitialized the database. It refreshed the table. Data in the table in the database is nothing. And when I go to the screen, view comics, there's no comics yet. And if I go look at my application viewer here nothing in the database so I then to fully test it should be able to save a comic Save to comics. All my output seems normal as before. View comics. There's my brand new comics database. If I look at the application by sequence, 
two new comics. There's no mention here about the deleted ones, because that one is undoable unless we saved our data elsewhere. We replicated it to a server or somewhere else. And now with this brand new database, I've got these brand new comics. I click on this one, get its pop-up stuff. I can delete this one. Confirmation, deleted. Comic is deleted. Save a new one, and uh, there it is. So it should be working, the saving, the deleting. Uh, we're going to get to um, editing very soon. Edit doesn't work yet. That's a rigmarole. But at this point here, we'll take our break. I'll put the, my code that I've got here, and then we'll confirm that it works.